Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the finale of the Elseworlds crossover, so Supergirl Season 4, Episode 9. Today we're going to be breaking it down and reviewing the episode, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So the Elseworlds crossover has come to an end, and it was a very, very, very good crossover. I think it's a close tie between Elseworlds and Crisis on Earth X. I will have to go back and watch them again to actually sort of compare it side by side, but I can tell you, I really, really enjoyed it. This episode gave us so much. I think the Arrow episode was the best overall, and then the Supergirl, and then the Flash one. I think that's definitely the order I would go in personally, but obviously that's just my opinion. So this episode did a great job wrapping up this story and a great job at setting up the next crossover. So we will talk about that in a minute, but we're not necessarily going to be going through this chronologically. I'm going to start off with some of the stuff to sort of tease and go into that main ending scene that we're going to be mainly talking about. And also I will have an extended video probably out later today if I have the time on that ending scene because I think it definitely deserves it. And so let's first off talk about John Deegan. So he is a main part in this episode, but he turns himself into black suited Superman and that's where he comes into it. So it wasn't another version of him from another Earth, it's actually John Deegan. So that was a pretty nice reveal and man oh man, Tyler Hecklin absolutely smashes it. He is so good as a villain. I just love him to death. I think he's so good. And this crossover just really shined on the fact that we should definitely get a Superman TV show sometime in the future, especially because Lois Lane was so good with Elizabeth Tullock. Like, those two together was just amazing. And also in the episode, everyone else has been changed. We get a version of Alex, and this is actually Alex from Earth 1. So this confirms Alex does exist on Earth 1, but Kara's pod never made it on Earth. So maybe that's to tease the idea of Power Girl in the future, if her pod actually never made it, and maybe it's a different version of herself. So I think that's a nice, interesting thing with them confirming this version of Alex does exist. And Alex, played by Kyla Lee, was a pretty big part in this episode and she just killed it. As per normal, one of my favorite parts. Additionally, I loved Killer Frost in this episode. So Danielle actually played a different changed version of herself where she's constantly, supposedly Caitlyn, but in the Killer Frost persona. And she, along with John Diggle and Alex, were all working underneath black suited Superman in this altered reality and I thought Killer Frost was just so good and so was Alex. So now we move on to the next thing. So there are multiple scenes in the episode where we go to space and we see the monitor and this is most likely out of the universe, out of anywhere that any mortal can go. So this is his plane. He looks upon the universe, looks upon the multiverse and that is where he lies. And we get multiple conversations with Barry and Oliver with him on there and then later in the episode the monitor gets visited by Oliver once again due to the fact that Superman sees in the Book of Destiny that the Flash and Supergirl will die as they try and slow down time and they were actually dying and you can see them disintegrating actually in real time and this deal that he's made with him we don't know what specifically he made but the monitor talked about to change one thing you have to change another so something massive has happened and maybe this is what leads up to the ending scene which we will talk about in a minute I don't want to go right to that straight away. So yeah, the monitor was just great in this crossover. La Monica Garrett actually was a massive star. He really stood out and I'm really looking forward to him in the next crossover because he's most definitely appearing next year. So now we talk about the big scene, the ending scene, and this is with Batwoman. It starts off with Batwoman calling Oliver, talking about that Dr. Destiny has made friends supposedly in Arkham Asylum where he is locked up with another with another inmate who is revealed to be Psycho Pirate. And so Psycho Pirate is a massive character in Crisis on Infinite Earths and he says, the stage is set, worlds will live, worlds will die, and the universe will never be the same. And then we get coming full 2019, Crisis on Infinite Earths. It is officially happening. They put that at the end of the episode, 
that was such a perfect way to end off the crossover, setting up the idea of Crisis on Infinite Earths and actually confirming it with the logo and everything. So you guys need to freak out right now because this whole crossover was setting up the idea of the Anti-Monitor actually coming and now he's officially freaking coming. You guys need to get ready for this because it's going to be massive. So as Psycho Power actually said, the stage is set and I think in regards to the stage is set, I think it's definitely to do with what Oliver has done, his deal, whatever he has done, definitely hints at and sort of leans into that. But also the idea that Psycho Pirate knows about this is a massive teaser for the actual crossover, so he's going to be very vital and so as he says, worlds will live, worlds will die and the universe will never be the same and if you didn't know, in Crisis on Infinite Earths in the comics, all the Earths try, the Anti-Monitor merges all the Earths and they all d get destroyed and then only a few are left remaining as the heroes from all around the multiverse team up to stop the Anti-Monitor, teaming up with the Monitor among many other characters and Psycho Pirate is actually big in this but he actually betrays the heroes and works with the Anti-Monitor in the comics so this is a major, major event that's going to be happening next year so really you have to read this before you actually go into it I highly recommend it, it's my favourite DC comic book storyline, I've got it in my room, I just love reading it and so I really recommend you do definitely get it before next year. So later today we will talk about that in proper depth in another video but let's move on and to talk about the rest of this episode. So we actually get a Legends character in the crossover and it's Gary, it's a really really nice cameo along with Cisco and James who are in fact criminals in this new reality and especially Cisco has some really really nice scenes and James doesn't really have much to do he's just there for one scene just to you know have the Supergirl characters in there and so we move on talking about Killer Frost and Alex there is a really really great conversation with them and Killer Frost actually says all work and no play and this was and this is in context to Alex and how she's you know so dedicated to her work but that is a shining reference and so that and so that really excited me and so now moving on to the next bit in the episode Kara is locked up because she's not from Earth 1 she can't be changed in this reality because it's not her actual Earth and so throughout the episode she tries to break out and she's not really successful until she actually is able to talk Alex into believing that they know each other on this different Earth and so we get a really really great Barry and Alex scene where Alex strangles Barry and he's like badass badass he's just repeating it constantly and you know I, I just really like that scene I think there should have been more Alex in this crossover which is you know a shame for me I'm a massive Alex fan she's one of my favorite characters in the Arrowverse and I really adored the scene she was in I just want more from Kyla in the next crossover and so Superman and Lois Lane return in this episode and Barry and Oliver go to Earth 38 with Cisco, and they go get their help and then they come to our Earth and Superman fights Black Suited Superman and Supergirl and the Flash try to run around the world in this nice homage to the original Superman films when he actually goes around the Earth to, in order to turn back time and in this case it's to slow down time as I mentioned prior to this and so additionally there are more Supergirl characters that come to this episode Martian Manhunt is in it for a very minimal amount of time same with Brainiac 5 it's just nice to see them I do I am a bit upset about like how little the Supergirl characters have got to do yes Alex did play a big role in this episode but apart from Supergirl, throughout the past few episodes, she really they haven't really been in it much. And obviously we had Superman and Lois Lane in it quite prominently, but none of like the main team Supergirl members, which is a shame. And also notably like Felicity or anyone from Team Arrow really was not in this episode at all. And obviously they tried to incorporate the Supergirl characters more than the first episode was about Team Flash more. So it makes sense that they can't get everyone in. But it's a shame that they can't spread it out throughout the episodes. I would like that a lot more if they could do that next year. But now moving on, so we get a amazing scene. One of my favourite scenes in the episode is when Barry and Kara are going around the earth trying to slow it down. And Lois Lane is falling in slow motion. And I thought it was just so well done. And the slow-mo really created an effect when you were watching it. And the fact that they are able to actually do this when Oliver actually makes a deal with the monitor... And we don't know what that is. I love the idea of that mystery. So we can talk about that more 
in tonight's video but essentially as time actually speeds up and Oliver stops black suited Superman time speeds up and Superman saves him and you know it's just a really iconic Lois Lane Superman moment that we needed to have that we were waiting to have and it was just so great so I really love the pairing with Tyler and Elizabeth so I really do want a spin-off show but obviously with Supergirl on I don't think that's gonna happen for a while but you know Fingers crossed sometime in the future we actually get that. As we head towards the end of the episode, when we stop Dr. Destiny and he turns back to his normal self, we get his real comic book look and his face is fucked up, like proper bad. And yeah, this is his comic book look, so we were all waiting for this and it's just rather shocking how kind of disgusting and gruesome it is. So I really like that the fact that they actually did that and he appeared in many scenes like that towards the end of the episode and so then we sort of end off the episode with a really nice few scenes and we get reference to Kara saying so this is an annual thing now because you know the fact that they come back every year you know teaming up so I thought that was really nice nod and sort of nudge that they do at the basically the exact same time every year. And then Team Supergirl leaves and Kara's like, peace out from your favourite Kryptonian because Cisco's like, yep, I have a favourite Kryptonian. And so I just really, really love these sort of sweet, innocent scenes of them just being friends, like Barry doing a peace sign as well. And yeah, it was just such a nice scene. And then we actually move on away from Earth 1 and we go to Earth 38 where Lois and Clark are revealed to actually be having a baby and they had this baby on Argo City and so this baby is going to be part Kryptonian and so it's revealed to Kara and us so this is like a major reveal and I do feel like this is to number one bring them away from the TV shows for about a year but then also to set up I can't help but feel like they're trying to set up the TV show sometime in the future so they are having a baby and they want to perhaps permanently move back but longer than nine months they said so don't expect Superman or Lois Lane to be around then but maybe we visit them on Argo City maybe if mon returns ever and they go to Allura that would be amazing or if Allura returns the Supergirl that would just be so cool if we could visit Argo again because I love Argo and I love all these references and so at the end of the episode there's another Clark and Lois scene and in this it's in the fortress as they're packing up really and the you know having some dinner in the fortress so they fly over there and Clark proposes to Lois so you know it's just a really nice way to end off the episode the fact that they're having a baby and also they're getting married like perfect and so they're gonna live happily on Arco City presumably and so as the crossover closed off Barry and Oliver are seen having a drink together and this is how we end off most crossovers with Barry and Oliver sort of just being friends and you know at the bar it seems to be like it happens quite a lot and Barry makes a reference to Oliver that he sort of understands and knows that he made a deal with the monitor in order to change their reality and then to paraphrase Oliver says you change your reality instead of him actually making a deal but I don't believe that I do think he's made a deal and with what the monitor said earlier in the episode that to change one thing you have to change another I think there's gonna be big repercussions to that but so that is it for this video guys hopefully you enjoyed it hopefully you love the crossover because I love the crossover It's definitely up there with the best ones so really really looking forward to next year crisis on infinite earths is coming and also check out my video that's going to be posted later tonight to do with that next crossover in 2019 so anyway guys i will see you guys later goodbye